Okay, here we are in the video three, which is example five, last example of this section, but I definitely wanted to cover one. So this one says, find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of the function at the given point. So we definitely need to have the derivative if they're asking us for the tangent line. So we need to find f prime of x, or in this case, y prime, same thing, right? Just different notation. So I am gonna treat this as a coefficient. So I'm gonna have one half times, and then the derivative of this arc cosine. So I'm gonna use the formula, let's see, u is equal to x, so then u prime would just be one. So the formula would be negative u prime, so negative one, over the square root of one minus u, which is x squared. And so if I simplify that, it's just negative one over two square root of one minus x squared. Then if I wanna find the slope of the tangent line, we have to plug in the x value that they gave us. So we need to figure out what f prime of x is. f prime of a specific x value. I think they use the letter c in the book. I think you might have been seeing that. Um, so it'd be negative square root of two over two because that's the x value that they gave me in the point, okay? So then I'm gonna plug in this value now square root, now this is a giant two, it's not a two index. I keep trying to write them like in the same height, but it's to be bigger actually. And I get negative square root of two over two squared. Now if your calculator has math print and it can simplify that, then you could type this in the calculator and get the answer, which is negative square root of two over two in the end. But if it doesn't have that capability and your calculator just keeps giving you decimals, then you need to know how to simplify this. It's pretty good if you know your arithmetic that well anyway. You should know your arithmetic that well at this point. So we definitely, I'm gonna just use my arithmetic concepts and figure this out on my own. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna square that, my order of operations, right? So one minus negative is a negative, going to be a positive but this negative is the negative I wrote there and then the square root of 2 squared is just 2 and 2 squared is 4 and so that is equal to negative 1 over 2 times the square root and what is 1 minus 2 over 4 that would be 4 over 4 minus 2 over 4 which is 2 over 4 or if you say what is 1 minus 1 half it's 1 half right so this is just 1 half and then if I take the square root of each of those pieces individually, I don't want it to look like a mixed number, so it starts to get weird how you should write that two, but that two is a factor, that two is being multiplied by this, right? So just keep that straight and you should be able to come up with the correct answer. So then now I have um, two times one over the square root of two, or I can say two, um, over the square root of two. And then whenever you have, the negative is just negative, but when you have one over something, it means the reciprocal. Okay, so this is the square root of two over two. Another thing you could have done is if you take this, it's a complex fraction, multiply by the common denominator on top and bottom, and you get negative square root of two over two either way, okay? but you should know how to convert that complex fraction into a single fraction. Okay, so now we've got the slope, okay? So this is, um, but I want the equation. So I need to do y minus the y value up there, which is three pi over eight, equal to m, which is this value, parentheses x minus the x value, and so then that's actually gonna be a plus. So when I distribute this, this is actually gonna be a giant plus sign. So it's gonna be negative square root of two over two x, and then negative times a positive will be negative. Square root of two times square root of two is square root of four, and then two times two is four. And I'm gonna add three pi over eight to both sides so that I can get y by itself. 
and I get negative square root of 2 over 2x, and this becomes negative 2 over 4 plus 3 pi over 8. Now this is the variable term. Both of these two terms are constant terms, and the computer does show them as one giant fraction, the constant terms. So they just want to have the variable term plus a constant term, and that's it. So the first thing I want to do to make that happen is I'm going to switch them because you do want plus in the middle there. So we're going to have 3 pi over 8 minus 2 over 4. So just keep that sign with that guy and that sign with that guy. And then I do want to have a common denominator, so I'm going to multiply by 2 there. So I can get that over 8. And so then we have 3 pi over 8 minus 4 over 8, which means I can write that as a single fraction. I get negative square root of 2 over 2x, and then I get plus positive 3 pi minus 4 over 8. Mm -hmm. And so then this is going to be the answer that they're looking for in the homework. Okay, so they want just one x term and then one constant term. So make sure you combine your like terms. And that is the end of the derivative of inverse functions section.